to get doesn't, the fumble. Doesn't matter where they ruled the ball dead. What is it? Well, I think the Browns might have been guilty of lining up offsides. They may have been lining. They may have been in the neutral zone. And Michael Dean Perry, there it is right here. Look at my position. It's very little to be gained by risking a, a turnover at that end of the field. You're in the game, and you're going to get the second half kick. I mean, off. it's looked awful. It's been ugly for Cleveland, but let's face it, they haven't been hurt that bad. They might. Well, I don't know if they have to run another play or not. The game clock and the uh, play clock are in sync right now. If I'm Bud Carson, I go on into the uh, locker room and I work on my fourth down offense because I'm not sure I'd go into the distance to the goal line because without it, it would have come out to the 20. Kozar steps up after pump faking, hits Mac, and Mac oh. is in for the touchdown. Kevin Mack. Barreling through Wyman Henderson and in for the score. It's actually starting to come yep. out. But not enough to reverse it, I don't think. If the play stands, you've got the critical extra point. I guess for offside Cleveland decline. They take the play. That's them a first down to the 45. You know, Bud Carson has always had a lot of success against John Elway when he was with the Jets and also with the Cleveland Browns. But he defenses him a little different than most teams. He usually has somebody make sure he's contained. And He's doing it again tonight. It's coming up next Monday night in the same kind of condition, Minnesota we, and Philadelphia. We do, but you know what's crazy about this game is that you, you, you go into a game like this, and it happens so often in the NFL, you think one team has no chance to win. Cleveland totally in disarray. Mm -hmm. We talked about desperation. We saw it last Teams that will have to do what the Browns are doing tonight to get their seasons turned around, Minnesota and Philadelphia. If you weren't with us earlier, the Browns had another punt block tonight. Two a week ago. Okay, uh, Two one-point games in an overtime in the last three weeks in a five-point game on opening day. Down by one here. You come with the reverse, go against the grain. It worked perfectly. Super call. Well, the Browns have it at the 20. The Broncos under Dan Reeves leading the Browns under Bud Carson by <laughs> six. And for those of you wondering, that was not your living room shaking. Mm -hmm. That's Mile High State. Yeah. Yeah. Short. Six, six twenty-four left in the ball game. You're down by nine. You need a touchdown and a field goal. You go. I think you go too. You got to give it a go. Well, you also have to keep in mind. Ralph Tam, his snapper, goes off the field, and the Browns have had terrible luck in punting the football. I mean, that's got to figure into his decision. It's not like he's got Ray Guy and a fabulous punting unit at his disposal. They're going for it. Three tight ends coming in. They have failed to convert 11 consecutive fourth down. Mac, yeah, has it. First down, Cleveland. To you notice going. You think there was any? You think there was any doubt that Kevin Mack was going to get the ball instead of Leroy Hort? <laughs> Illegal procedure, Cleveland. Good call, Art Fleming. <laughs> <laughs> we needed the answer first. <laughs> <laughs> he gets it on fourth and two to joins a not a good percentage pass going way upfield on the fourth and two and he comes right back no huddle hits Brennan in the end zone and it's going to be interesting to see what they do on the kickoff interesting to see what they do on the extra point here too three timeouts remaining and this is a defensive coordinator that's now a head coach he's going to live or die with his defense a great job of looking off the secondary by Bernie Kozar looking to the right side of the field and then coming five yard line that hurts mm -hmm. Had it gone another yard or so and into the end zone, it would have been taken at the 20. And as you pointed out, the longtime defensive coordinator, Bud Carson, has been around a long time before he got his first head coaching job with the Browns a year ago. And most of it was on defense. Now, they're going to be trying to strip that ball. And this, of course, going back to that fourth and two pass. That or the tackle. So they keep possession the hard way. At the 26-yard line. And Bud Carson says, give me a timeout here. 
Boy, what an all-pro play. What right a in the face play. of Elway, and we talked about Carson being able to contain John Elway. Now, that's not by accident that Clay Matthews was out there. Elway had nowhere to go. He had nowhere to get to the... Off a block punt. 29-27. 2 four team remaining they still have two timeouts plus the two-minute warning and that was an ugly offensive series by the Denver Broncos Sammy Four. Winder loses yardage then the tip pass by Clay Matthews and then the incompletion or a thing Broncos stand to prevent defense and what the Browns of course can think at this point we it's second down but we're also but the majority of this game is how Bud Carson's offensive line has played the best game they have played in a long time. Granted, Denver does not have the most stellar pass rush in the NFL, but still... It's a little lighter. It's called the Mile High City. That ball will travel much further. Timeout Cleveland. They have one remaining. Boy, and there is the beauty of having those two timeouts. Still one to stop it if they need to attempt the field goal. Came down with it, and Dan Reeves says the wheels have come off. Well, it comes down to what has killed Cleveland. Another one-point game. Their special teams. Another one-point game yeah. for Denver. Last time we were here three weeks ago, Treadwell kicked the field. That is the Cleveland Browns and Bud Carson. Tam to snap, Pagel to hold. Win or lose here from 30. Cleveland wins it. What a game. What a game for Bud Carson. So much pressure. Well, thank God suicide isn't an option. And they win in Denver. The Cleveland Browns, who beat the Denver Broncos during the regular season last year, and then lost in the AFC Championship game, never, never, I think, appreciated a win over the Broncos more than this one tonight. And again, the Broncos leading at the half. Lose one in the second half. And the Broncos, who got a lot of help from Buffalo last night in beating the Raiders, doesn't follow through by doing their fair share. They go ahead and lose tonight. Now drop to what, two and three? Two and three. And in the last four weeks, they played three one-point games and an overtime game. <laughs> Jerry Gorick. That might have even been better than the Grey Cup. <laughs> and Bud Carson being embraced by yep. his assistants on the sidelines. For a change. And yep. Harried, we visited with him last night. He was a, a little bit of a wreck last night, but he has pulled one off. We'll see Cleveland in a couple of weeks against Cincinnati. It'll be a happy ride home after the disaster in Kansas City. Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, Dan Deardorff. See you next Monday from Philly. Saturday, it's region.